Continuing on, my interview with Sid Vinich. Sid, will you tell me about your role in the development of the show Baywatch? Sure. My development of Baywatch had been predated, fortunately, by creating a show called America's Top Ten, ten years mm -hmm. before that. And while at that time I was disappointed because I wasn't able to sell this show to the networks, and I landed on syndicating it. America's Top Ten was a countdown show, a countdown of the top songs or records of the week. Mm -hmm. And we took it out across America and put it on 180 stations that were not network. We created our own network. Wow. And uh, we would pay for the production, mm -hmm. and we would go to a station, and we'd say to the station, we will give you this show in exchange for the time, for you putting it on the air. Mm -hmm. You will get to sell half of the spots, we'll get to keep the other half of the spots. And we went then, we hired somebody who would go to Coca-Cola and Ford and mm -hmm. every the big national advertisers to sell those spots that we kept in the show, allowing us to produce it. The local stations we were on would sell the spots usually to local advertisers. Oh, I a see. car dealer, mm -hmm. a McDonald's franchise, a clothing department store, or something like that. And uh, so we put the show on nationally, and the show was on for, for 12 years. And we had a number of other shows in the 1980s that were syndicated. This was very fortunate because what happened was the financial interest rules had come down. And the financial interest rules allowed the networks to own television shows. Prior to that, they weren't allowed to own television shows. A producer would go to a network, sell a show, right. the network would have a license for two runs. I see. Then the show would come back to me as the producer, and in the meantime, I got to sell it internationally, I would get to do things with it, syndicate it, et cetera, afterwards. So producers were able to make an enormous amount of money back in those days. So it wasn't like a buyout for the show. That's it right. Nowadays, uh, when you sell a show to the network, you keep very, very little and virtually no control. Sure. It's, it's very difficult. So at any rate, we were in that business of syndication, mm -hmm. and there was a show on NBC in 1988 sort of an accidental show, and that's another whole separate story, that was doing quite well at 10 o'clock on Friday night. But NBC was embarrassed by it, and they didn't want to spend a lot of money on it, and mm -hmm. the show was quite expensive to produce. So the producers went around town and couldn't find anybody who would step up to the plate on the show. And eventually they came to us, probably the last stop. and. Uh, I appreciated the show primarily because my son was a swimmer mm -hmm. and he was a lifeguard on the, uh, the, life, the Los Angeles lifeguards in Santa Monica. And I knew how difficult it was to be a lifeguard there. The water's cold, sure. the uh, currents are strong, and you've got to stand there and pay attention hour after hour. And there's some 250 pound guy out there who, when you go out to save him, all he wants to do is kill you. Because he <laughs> sees you as a, as a life raft. He's sure. just going to pull you down. So I knew how difficult it was, so I was sympathetic to the concept. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, the way the business worked in those days, a pilot would be made, mm -hmm. it would be delivered in uh, April, May, the networks would look at it, they would study it, and they would schedule for the series from the pilots they had. Then. The international companies would come over at the end of May and beginning of June to see all the pilots that were going to go to series. I see. To mm -hmm. buy the ones they wanted. They couldn't start those shows running in September when the, the networks would start their series running because they waited until the whole library for the year was delivered. Mm -hmm. Then they would hire actors in Germany or Italy sure. or wherever it is and to dub. come in and dub it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So Baywatch started in September on NBC by you know February, March, it was over, but then it was just starting overseas. Baywatch became much more than a guilty pleasure in places like Scandinavia, mm -hmm. Germany, England. It became a huge hit because it was Blue Sky, it was Malibu, it was a fantasy. And these people are freezing. In February in yeah, Stockholm. It, yeah. it was, <laughs> it's terrible. In fact, the Germans would spend 
uh, five to six hours on every episode color correcting it because they couldn't believe that the skies were that blue and the uh -huh. water was that blue. They, things were gray. Their whole lives were gray. Mm -hmm. And they tried to take the tan out of people's faces, you know, because <laughs> they, they just couldn't understand it. But at any rate, that international piggy bank would provide half of the money we needed to produce the show. Wow. Being in syndication, we knew that we could go out and syndicate this show and raise the other half of the money. Mm -hmm. And being in syndication, we also realized that the syndicated stations usually ended up, at least in major markets, being your sports stations. Mm -hmm. So in a market like uh, Los Angeles, a KTLA or a KCAL, mm -hmm. ran the Dodgers, ran the Angels, ran the uh, Lakers, the Clippers, etc. Sports attracts males. Mm -hmm. We thought, well, Baywatch would attract males also. Mm -hmm. So we stepped up to the plate on this show. It was a huge uh, ask for us because we didn't have that kind of money. And you don't get paid by the advertisers you, until 90 days after the show is run, which really is like a, a half a year after you've laid the money out and produced the show. You know, and so it's quite we a risk. Were, it was a big, big risk, and we had to find banks that would support us and completion bonds, et cetera. It was really a huge risk that, knock on wood, it paid off sure. for us. It lasted for about uh, 11 years. Mm -hmm. We did about 250 episodes, which was a lot of episodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was quite successful. So there you are with Baywatch. Okay. Thank you for watching this interview with Sid Vintage. And please, watch the next video in this series.